for Off the Block. I'm Vane Lopez, and we are now joined by Kevin Barnett, who's going to be calling the NCAA Tournament Finals match tomorrow night with Paul Sutherland, and that match is going to air on ESPN2. We're going to do a little bit of a different interview here, folks. Instead of breaking down the match, I want to talk to Kevin about, you know, just calling volleyball matches and really kind of give you an inside look at all the prep work and everything that goes on in the world of volleyball media. So, Kevin, I You want me to ask... give away all my secrets? All yeah, well, well not, 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 not all of them. Not all of them. J- just a few, though, maybe. Just a few. I, I want to ask you, though, Kevin, to start off with, you know, looking at, at this match, what do you feel are going to be the biggest storylines that you guys are going to want to help tell and help shape that narrative at the start of the match? You have the two, the last two national team coaches, of course, John Spurrow is still current, but Alan Knight back in 2012, who were playing. You have two of the most gifted setters in the collegiate game. You have Micah Maha and Josh Uniga. I think that's an interesting matchup. The best player in collegiate volleyball is in there. Uh, you could make an argument for Nicholas Scherzen, who's been eliminated now, but DJ DeFalco, to my mind, is the, the best player in the game. I, I think you could match him up fine. Let's call him uh, west of St. Louis. We'll uh, have T.J. DeFalco be the best player in the game. And I think you have the best team, which is Long Beach State, against the second best team, I think, over the year, which is UCLA. And I think UCLA, if they can play to their own level, what they're capable of, if they can really play to the level they're capable of for an entire match, they are the better team. I think now, Long Beach State is a better team all year. Like they, Long Beach State, the level they have played all year is superior to anyone. The Bruins have not captured what they are fully capable of for an entire match yet, and will they do it in the final is the question. Now, I want to ask you in particular, as you prepare for these matches, you know, it's not you just rolling up to Mike and talk. I know that you spent a lot of time. Right? What is the typical experience like for you just per- preparing to announce a match like this? It's very different if you're doing play-by-play or if you're doing analysts. Uh, it's quite different. So for analysts, analyst is vacation for me now that I'm a full-time play-by-play guy. So I went to the semifinals. I watched the quarters on TV. I went to the semis. And then I went back to practice today, spent four hours at UCLA watching both practices, talking to the coaches, talking to some of the players, talking to the assistants, and getting just some general storylines in order. I'll go home tonight and I'll make a, a Long Beach State roster because I haven't made one this year. didn't have to see them for TV, although I've seen them in person just for fun several times. And then I will come with storylines prepared, things I want to touch on. I'll go through the season stats and look at where the trends are and different talking points I can pick up on. Because as an analyst, I'm not the who and what. I'm not the stats. I'm not the names. I'm telling you why, what the stats mean. I'm the how and why. What does this stat mean? What does this stat tell you? How does this stat from the season going to affect this particular match? What have we seen from this guy? Where is he really good? Well, he's really good on the right. We can tell it because of that, but why is he really good on the right? What's making him more efficient on the right than the left? Those kinds of things are what I'm responsible for at the analyst role. So I do want to ask because, you know, you talk to volleyball fans. One of the most fascinating things, I'm very much in the pro Barnett camp, but you tend to be, it's amazing how people view you as one of the more polarizing people. They either love you mm-hmm. or, or they hate you. How do you embrace that? Is that something that you've had to deal with? If you don't like my opinion, that's fine. If you think I'm factually wrong and you can prove it, I'll own it. I've gotten things wrong. I talk for a living. I've talked for more than a decade about volleyball. I've gotten things wrong, no doubt, in terms of facts at the time. doesn't happen often, but it does, and I'll own it. If you don't like my opinion, then you have to show me how you're right and I am wrong. Because there are times when I'm a little off base, but not too many. I have a wide knowledge of the game. I've talked to a lot of people. I watch a lot of volleyball. I've watched an incredible amount of international volleyball. And that's after having played international volleyball for a decade. So if you, Muffin Man 69 out there, think that you know more about volleyball than me, that's fine. Step two, and we'll we'll figure out who knows more. And people don't like me because I have an opinion. <laughs> My job is to have an opinion, folks. My job is to tell you why that's not a good swing. My job is to tell you that guy is not performing to his level. That's what I'm paid for. I'm not paid to cozy up to somebody. I'm not paid to be someone's friend. I'm paid to tell you why I like or dislike what's happening on the floor and how it should be fixed. I get paid to second-guess the coaches. 
I get paid to, to criticize or praise the players for what they're doing or not doing. That's what I get paid for. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I do want to ask you a broader sense, talk about this. What do you think that we're doing right in terms of volleyball broadcast, and what do you think is an area of improvement that, that can be made? That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what are we doing right? We have more of it on. There's more volleyball than there's ever been on TV. We're not educating our broadcasters on how to broadcast. We're not telling the ex-coaches, the ex-players, that your job is to have an opinion. People will dislike you. People will dislike you no matter what. There are a couple of commentators I know that never have a negative thing to say about anybody. It's disingenuous to the way the world works. Now, people say, I'm too negative. I might be. I'm a realist. I'm a critical thinker. My job as a player was to pick you apart. When I played against you, was it my job to say, oh, my God, this guy is amazing. He is so good. He can hit the line. He can hit the angle. His jump serve is out of this world. His block is so big, I don't see how anybody gets by him. Is that how anyone would approach a situation where you have to be a competitor? No. Yeah, this guy's good at that, but I'm going to take him out here. That ball goes up on top of the net. I'm going to jump higher than that guy. I'm going to hit the ball past him. I'm going to hit the ball off him. I don't care if he's in front of me. I don't get paid to praise somebody as a player. And so I bring some of that critical thinking into what I do as a broadcaster. And I, and I think more people need to do that. Show us what you know. Don't tell me about how everybody's awesome. Obviously, if someone is losing, they're not playing awesome. If someone is down 16 to 7 in a set, then you should you should tell us why. Why they stink right now. Because if you're down 16-7, yeah, you stink. Own it. And I get that some of the Internet, their job out there is to be fans of somebody and they can do no wrong and they're going to defend whoever it is for whatever reason to the end of the earth. I get it. Fine. But you are not addressing factually what's happening. Now, I do want to ask you, you know, um, the Tuesday matches, um, the playing matches, they're, I'll, I'll be honest, looking for and further, there was a lot to be desired. But one interesting thing that I think that they did do that provided something, at least in the second match, was they had um, Nate from USA Volleyball there who was able to provide some advanced an- analytics to the match. And do you think that that's an area of the game where yeah, that would be helpful for a volleyball broadcast to do graphics that kind of show how teams are doing when this person's serving, things along those lines, so people can better understand the game? Sure, I think there's room for improvement in that. It's going to take money, but I, yeah. I think there is. The, the dangerous trend up there is statistics can get very muddy very quickly in terms of listening to them and trying to understand them. The challenge for TV is to figure out how do I make this statistic make sense in one frame, in other words, in, in one picture. Here's a picture and have it convey what you're trying to convey. That's important. Uh, and I think there's room for that to improve, and I think it just takes some creative thinking. It's going to take some some logistics on the graphics side. Lots of times now with a lot of the collegiate matches, we don't have the budget to to be doing that. The producers are doing the best with what they have, and, and they'll do whatever we ask them to do. And I think that's, again, where you get to the analyst. The analyst, the analyst is a star. Look, I've made a move from the analyst who's really the star of the broadcast to the play-by-play. I'm wallpaper, man. My job is to describe what happens, make it sound exciting, punch it up, and then make the analyst look smart. My whole job is to make anyone who's sitting next to me look intelligent, educated, and on point about the game in front of us. That's that's my role. All right. One one final question. We'll let you go on on this tomorrow tomorrow night's match here as we're filming this on Friday. It's going to be a great one. What's the best college match you've called? Best college match that I have called. Yeah, I think it's a shame we didn't call. Yesterday's matches, yeah, <laughs> the semifinals, because those would rank right up there. That was a missed opportunity by the folks that make the decisions about who to broadcast and what to broadcast. That was a missed opportunity on some compelling results. And that you can't control, but outstanding volleyball and that we knew, that we had the best teams there, that they were going to play really good volleyball. I, I think that was a, a missed opportunity. The best collegiate match... You know, last year's final was really good because of the atmosphere, because it was home for OSU, and we got that again this year with UCLA. What a stroke of luck that is. 
OSU at home and they win it. It was exciting. It wasn't the best match, but it was exciting. Sometimes it can be exciting and be entertaining, but the match isn't that good because the environment can be so good. And sometimes what's happening on the floor can be compelling and entertaining, and what's happening around it is terrible because there's 90 people there in a 12,000-seat stadium. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Kevin Barnett, and you can be sure to hear him on the call on Saturday night on ESPN2. Kevin, thanks for joining us today. 